Welcome back. Now, in less than a week's time, the Finance Minister will deliver the Medium Term Budget Policy Statement, or MTBPS. In the statement, government really outlines its plans for spending in coming years. The more detailed numbers for tax changes, annual allocations, anything like that, are given in the February budget. Well, South Africa has been taking on more debt over time because the revenue coming into the coffers is simply not enough to cover its spending. Government has been trying to rein in spending to ensure the situation doesn't spiral out of control. But ahead of the statement, some economists are warning that too many spending cuts, the so-called austerity measures, could in fact curb growth and lead to even more economic pain. To discuss, we're joined by PwC economist Christy Filyun. Mr. Filyun, thank you. Are you in the camp that says we should rein in debt urgently, or are you in the other camp that is concerned, really, that the belt can't be tighten further well it's almost being stuck between two camps uh, the most prudent thing would be that we need to stop accumulating more debt we need a, a peak in debt we always measure that as percentage of gdp it's always a few years away this peak in debt on the other side you, you can't cut too much because uh, there's always an argument about efficiency and productivity in the public sector and questions about that but the bottom is government plays a very important role in the economy in the hard and soft infrastructure, basic services, education, health, at all kinds of levels of society. So I think it's difficult to be stuck in one camp versus the other because it really is, as the finance minister is probably stuck between a rock and a hard place. For people concerned about unemployment and poverty and even starvation uh, that, that we see in this country, do you think we'll hear details of any sort of income grant? There's the 350 rand, but many want something bigger, something more permanent. Uh, what should government be doing there and what do you expect? So we've had for a few years now the 350 rand a month grant. And it's been in place while government and other stakeholders look at a more permanent and likely a bigger type of payment that's, that should be happening. And at the moment, we don't have a specific payment planned for the next financial year. In other words, the financial year that starts in April next year. So if we don't get a clue this month we, or the, the, with this speech, we have to get something tangible in February. And I'm thinking if, if the next iteration of this monthly payment is something substantially larger, we need some kind of warning to come out in November to say, listen, we're implementing something that's going to be more expensive. And obviously, how are we going to pay for this? We can't really take money away from too many other places. So then we start thinking about where does the money come from? Mm. Are we increasing taxes? Would we increase VAT, based, uh, personal income tax? All of the things that we don't want to do. But if we need money for this grant that's growing, it needs to come from somewhere. To calm down the people concerned about too much austerity, the finance minister has said that spending cuts won't be deeper than underspending by government. Is that a prudent approach? So if any department hasn't spent their allocation, uh, they get a chop? I think it's actually a very good approach. So what happens every year in many parts of government, there's a budget of 100 rand and only 90 or 95 of that is spent. So the finance minister has a good idea of where money is not being spent. So he'll take a bit here and a bit there to make up that gap. Our calculation is that the, the income gap would be about 30 billion. There are bigger numbers out there, depending on how you estimate that. And that 30 billion is well within his reach when it comes to where underspending usually happens. So we've heard it's going to be a bit of spending cut and it's going to be a bit of extra borrowing. Just the question of what that balance would be. But I think the finance minister is, is well within his reach to say that he's going to use what his knowledge is about this underspending to make up that yeah. gap. In other words, instead of making programs and departments and uh, redundant, you rather get your gap a little bit closer by, by pulling on that underspending. Is it enough, though? I mean, what about SOE? So government has already committed to taking on a lot of ESCOM's debt. Now it seems that Transnet desperately needs more money. And in a sense, uh, Transnet is the wheels of the economy or, or the rails. Uh, what should Treasury do there? And is that a huge risk to the budget, to uh, the deficit, to our debt levels? 
Public corporations have been a risk to the fiscal situation for many, many years. We know that it's, it's well known. And the commitments made to ESCOM, I don't think they'll make any changes to that. Those have been made. It's part of the medium to long term plan to change what we see in South Africa from the electricity sector. So I'm not really thinking that there's going to be adjustment to that. The question about rail transport, a very topical at the moment. We're seeing lots of engagement between government and the private sector trying to improve the rail situation. There's a draft plan that's coming out, a, a way of getting more private sector involvement in the railway system, which is mostly operated by the public sector. So for me, there's positive developments. Uh, we see media comments and media reports on questions and comments and ideas. And it, it's going to come down to the numbers that the finance minister is crunching. It's going to come down to what the potential is to revive railway by bringing in more private sector involvement. All of those things need to be taken into account before there's, there's any consideration or any decision that can be made by the finance minister on whether there is additional finance needed for public corporations in that sector. It's, it's very difficult to say at this point because things are developing quite quickly. Uh, we'll have to look specifically in the speech next week to understand where the finance minister is when it comes to rail. Yeah, so Transnet is the biggie. Final question. Uh, the budget has been blown already by a higher than budgeted for hike for public servants. Uh, that's also been a source of concern. Were mistakes made there? Well, the tricky bit with, with public sector wages, uh, the budget in Feb is always set before these negotiations finish, which is usually two, three, four months later. So the, the original budget plan is generally not in line with what's happening there. And there's lots of debate about how much public sector workers are earning, should be earning adjustments according to inflation. I think the focus for us heading into this budget is the fact that Public sector wages and the wage bill is a bit bigger than we initially thought, and revenue is on the other side a bit weaker. So the finance minister needs to take that into account also when he's planning where does he move money around from this side to that side. Um, it's a tricky job. I don't think anybody envies his job because he needs to work with these opposing forces. So I think I'm hoping he makes a specific comment on how he is going to balance this increase in cost and the decline in income because... We need to know what his thinking is, because maybe next year this happens again. We don't know. It's, it's, it's a risk that we have to work mm. with. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Some pre-medium-term uh, budget analysis with PwC economist Christy Fullion.